Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's NROT webinar. My name is Bennett. I'll be the moderator for today. Our presenter is Aaron Clapp. He's an application specialist at SAI. And today he uh, he's going to be showing us how to create a 3D sign from start to finish. We've kind of been building up to this one the last few webinars, and I know a lot of you have been excited for it, and I'm excited for it as well. So it'll be a good one. After the presentation, we'll be able to answer any questions you have either about this webinar or any other NROUTE topics. So feel free to put those questions in the chat and we'll answer as many as we can. We are recording the webinar as always. So if you want to review anything that Aaron discusses, we'll be sending you all the link to the recording here this afternoon. So look out for that. And that's about it for me. So I'll turn it over to Aaron. All right, sounds good. So. Um... This will probably be a little bit longer than our normal webinar, but that's okay. Um, I'm also going to try to uh, explain as much as I can while going quickly. Um, the good thing is you guys get the recording, so if you ever want to review anything that we did here, uh, you can always go back and take a look at it. So <clears throat> we're going to build a 3D sign or a 3D-ish sign. And we're going to use three, uh, several kinds of techniques. Um, one of the things that I prefer not to do is to create a complete 3D model of something in NROUTE and then toolpath it um, as much as possible, at least with this kind of a sign, right? I like to use a lot of mixture between the 3D engraving and using two, 2D toolpathing and then use the 3D where it's appropriate. Um, you'll find that if you can use as, as much as possible, if you can use 2.5D or 2D toolpathing, it'll save you a lot of time in your cutting. And that's kind of the some of the things that we're going to add into this build. But it's going to be a complete 3D sign. It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be cool to look at, and it'll have a lot of those elements and things in it. Um, now... To kind of just give you a description here. I'm gonna we're gonna create a, a rectangular sign that has a little bit of a 3D background in it. It's gonna have some raised letters uh, that are on a platform, uh, and then I'm gonna have some 3D engraving into that as well. So why don't we get started? And and I think as we go along, things are gonna start to kind of fall into place. And uh, you'll kind of see what I'm, I'm looking at here. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started by drawing up some text here. So I I went ahead and found a font that I kind of really liked because it had a nice flat, uh, wide profile to it. So we're going to type up some text here. And we'll make some adjustments to this as we go along. I'm going to center that using control five on my keypad. Uh, we're going to convert this to curves because we don't need it to be in text anymore. We want it to be in lines and arcs. Uh, and then let's see, I'm going to go ahead and draw a frame for my piece here. So let's switch to construct by height and width. And let's see here, let's do 30 by 20 and see what that looks like. And okay, that's obviously a little too short. So let's go, let's go 42 maybe. And okay, that looks okay. And then 20, I think is a little too high. So let's go, actually let's go 40 and try 15. Okay, so that, that looks about right. That looks kind of agreeable. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make my text just a little bit smaller. Uh, based on what I want to do. So I'm going to hold down shift to make sure that this actually happens proportionally. Uh, we'll just bump that down just a little bit. And then I'm going to center everything here. Uh, let's see here. Nope, transform, align, centers. There we go. And then I'll just put the whole thing in the middle. Okay, so that kind of gives us a start. One of the things I want to do is I want to have a half an inch uh, lip around the edge just to kind of contain the sign or kind of give it a nice little border, a thick border on that edge. And it just has to be square. It doesn't really matter uh, in that particular case. I do want rounded corners, though, just to kind of give us a nice, I don't know, soft feel to the sign, I, 
I suppose. So let's do some rounding of some corners here. And one inch, let's see. I think one inch is okay. Let's just stay with one inch. Um, we'll do all corners, that's right. There we go, that kind of gives me some nice <clears throat> rounded corners there. Now, I think I want that edge on my sign to be about, about half an inch. So let's go to edit contours here and let's do offset. And let's change this to 0.5 inches. We'll do it rounded uh, and external and apply. Okay, so that's going to be our kind of our edge or border edge. And then this little section in here in between the letters, we're going to hog that out down. Now, what I'd really like to do is I want to take these letters and not only just make them stand out, I want them to be kind of on a little bit of a platform, uh, kind of on their own. So I want them to have a little bit of a backdrop. So I'm going to create that here by just going in and doing a uh, an offset again except for, let's zoom in here, and I think I'm gonna go quite a bit larger on this one. I'm gonna make it so that a lot of these little inside pieces disappear, and I would actually like to close the gap between the E and the seven here. So let's just keep going until some of those touch. I think that actually looks pretty good. Uh, this kind of gives us a, a, something to work with here, and um, we're touching here, but we can get rid of that. So I'm, I'm happy with this, I think this is okay. And apply. All right, now I do want to get rid of this because I don't want this little thing in here. So I'm going to go into transform, ungroup, and get rid of this guy. And we'll talk about how we kind of, I had this idea in my mind, and these are kind of the things that you're going to work through as you create these designs, right? So, uh, you know, you have to kind of, when I first envisioned this and I was working through it, you know, I kind of had some ideas and I started adding stuff here and there, but um, these are kind of all like the beginning stages of, of what we're going to do here. So one thing I also don't particularly like about this is I don't like these little bumps uh, particularly, and I don't like how sharp these, these rounded edges are because a bit is going to have a hard time getting in there. So I'm actually going to round those off. So let's go to draw. Edit contours and fillet again, or fillet, however you like to say that. Um, and we're just going to round off all the corners with, I think a one inch actually looks good. That'll actually give us plenty of a radius here so that if I want to use a fairly large tool, it's not going to have a problem with a, like a funny little radius in these corners, especially for like this one, for example. This is going to be a real problem here. Um, again, if you're using a smaller tool, probably not that big of a deal, but I kind of like the smoother feel to the softer, smoother feel of the curves on this one. So I'm going to hit apply. And then let's correct some things here. I don't particularly like, I can mention these little bumps down here. These are kind of unnecessary. So let's straighten those out. And I think I kind of want to get rid of these two bumps and it looks like we got some bumps here. So let's just go into our point editing. So I'm going to go to draw, edit contour segments. We're just going to go to linearize. We're going to flatten these guys out because they're kind of unnecessary and uh, I don't like them. So we're just going to go click here and click here. And we'll straighten that line out. That looks nice. And then let's go here and here. Hit enter. And then I'm just going to go ahead and straighten this whole thing out just like that. Okay, I kind of like that aesthetic a little bit better. You got a nice little flat area up here, flat area down here, and then kind of a little bit of visual interest with the curves. So that's kind of nice. That's just about right. Uh, it gives you a little bit of movement, but not too much. Okay, so we've got most of our base geometry down. We've got the shape, we've got the area that we want. Uh, we know that the area between here and here so this area between here is going to be where our texture is going to be, or at least that's where I want the texture to be, is, is in the zone. This little area is going to be a platform that's standing up above the texture. It's not going to have any texture on it, just going to be a flat platform. And then I think what I want to do is, at least for our first rendition, we're going to, we're going to actually do a couple different examples here. 
But for our first example, this is going to be standing up from the material, and this is going to be 3D engraved as a V-groove letter into that flattened area. So we're all doing this on, let's see here, just so you guys can see it, uh, we're doing this on a two inch thick material. So, and I've kind of planned this out of my head ahead of time as to how I want this to happen. Um, so I'm gonna kind of spit out some numbers here. So just so, so that we can kind of visually or mentally get a picture of what we're trying to do. So I want my texture to be no taller than one inch. So that's gonna be about halfway down uh, the material. So I want my texture to be one inch total. And then I want my letters to be standing, um, or I want this background here to be standing three quarters of an inch taller than my texture so that it kind of gives it a nice definition. It's like this is standing out, clearly standing out. But I also want it to be lower than the top of the material. So we're going to cut this down to 1.75 inches so that we have a high enough to get past our texture, but low enough so that it's not the same height as the outside lip. I want that to, I want, I don't want them to be on the same plane. And then I want to cut these letters down a quarter of an inch into that raised up section. So Let's kind of start gaming this out here step by step. So let's work on the 3D texture first. So I'm going to start splitting up my layers here. And this is where this is going to be really useful for us. We've we've we're learned a lot of different things. We've done, we've learned some 3D. We've talked about how to toolpath 3D. We've talked about layers and how you should use layers in your jobs. We're all going to use all that stuff here together in this job. So first of all, I'm just going to name my layer so it makes sense. So this is going to be the outside cut. That's just my, my rotting offset that's going to cut the sign out. Uh, this is going to be my 3D texture. And then this is going to be my uh, raised platform. Oh, my goodness. There we go. Uh, and this is going to be my text. We'll just call it text because we'll do several things with that text. I think that's enough layers for now. I'm just going to hit OK. If we always need to add layers, we can. No worries. Um, OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to copy and paste elements uh, from this uh, and... Um, we're going to paste them into different layers. In order to do my 3D texture, I'm going to need three things. I'm going to need the outside piece, the inside piece, and this piece, because I want my 3D texture to go in between uh, this area right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click, uh, copy. I'm going to turn off all layers so that I'm only seeing one layer at a time. Go to my 3D, and this is important. I'm going to right click paste the active layer. There is a shortcut for that, but uh, I'm just too familiar with right clicking it that um, uh, that's just me. So but if you if you do uh, you just add the, the shift in there with the control V and that'll give you paste the active layer. Okay, let's go back to our outside cut. Uh, I need this piece for my platform. So I'm just gonna copy it. And I would normally use shortcuts and stuff here, but I also kind of want you guys to visually see what I'm doing so that it's not a mystery as well. That kind of also helps you guys kind of know what I'm doing and, and not just assume that I'm hitting a key stroke. Okay, so we've got that in here. We're going to do something with this here in a minute, but we'll explain that. Uh, then I'm going to do text. Oh, wait, I guess I need to go back here and grab it first. So we'll just grab my text. Again, we're just going to copy this and then paste the active layer. OK, now this took me a little, a few minutes to kind of game out what I needed in what layer. But once you kind of have an idea in your mind, you kind of start playing with it. Um, you can kind of start moving things into different layers. And what I've done is because I 
at first I don't know what I'm going to do. I've, I keep everything that I draw for the most part inside that first layer. And even though in this outside cut layer, I could theoretically just delete that and leave it there. I'm for now, it's not going to hurt anything for me to have this here. These are all my original elements that I'm going to be using. Um, and I'm just going to keep them here because if I don't tool path them, nothing happens with them. So I'm going to leave them here in case I ever need to go back and say I accidentally delete my text from this layer. I can always just go back from into my outside cut layer. And the good thing is, is because it's in the same place and it hasn't moved, I could just copy and paste it into the active layer and I know it's going to put it in the right spot for me. So we'll do that. So let's let's tackle the 3D texture though. So if I want the 3D texture, let's jump into that layer. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use the, the masking technique, which we've talked about before, is I'm going to mask a, I'm going to create a texture and then I'm going to mask it to the background. So one way that you could do this is you could stack a bunch of 3D elements on top of each other to create one big 3D object. I like to use masking because um, Enroute does have sometimes when you create 3D reliefs, especially vertical reliefs, sometimes there can be an issue with the transition between a vertical relief and let's say a texture. So in order to get a really nice, clean texture that looks like it just blends right into the background, I'm going to use a masking technique. So this outside box is going to be the full size of my sign. But I'm just going to go ahead and use it in order to, to create my texture. And then I'm going to use these two lines to create the mask so that it actually doesn't cut anything on the outside or in the middle. So those are the areas that we're going to exclude. So like always, we need to select something. We're going to start with a, a, a base relief. Down here, I'm going to choose flat and I'm going to say add. Now, here's one thing also to consider is I do not necessarily want uh, to add one inch of relief. And I'm actually going to, let's go ahead and just show you that right, that right now. So let's go ahead and just put a, a relief with zero height, zero base, 50 resolution, apply. That's required. We already know this, that's required just to get a relief started, right? You have to have a relief there before you can apply texture. So let's go to my bamboo texture here. We'll throw this in and then let's just make this one inch tall and see what happens. See what kind of results we get. I'm gonna say add, because we wanna add it to the existing relief. We'll hit apply and we'll see what happens here. And it's it's not gonna be super pretty. Um, so, and, and you'll kind of see that, you'll see right away what the issues are. From this side, it that doesn't look so bad, right? Um, when you look at it from the perspective view, you see that there's a major problem. I mean, those little bumps are just way too much. It's way too exaggerated. So this texture obviously does not benefit from, from this. Now, if this is your plan and you were doing this on a huge wall, maybe that's not that big of a deal. But in this particular case, we're doing a relatively small sign and that's that that texture is too tall. So that is why I want to reduce the amount of actual texture that I add to the top of the relief. So we're going to go ahead and just get rid of this because it's ridiculous. And we're going to start back to where we were outside, add relief. But this time I'm going to add just a vertical height of 0.75. So I'm going to add a base of 0.75 inches. If we look at that, it's just going to look like this. I'm going to hit apply. And when we look at it in 3D, it's nothing special. It's just a block is all it is, right? Um, and now when I add my texture, though, so I'm going to grab my relief. Now when I add my bamboo texture, I'm going to go in here and say, okay, my texture, I only want it to be a quarter of an inch tall. So total we're going to have 0.75 inches of base and then a quarter inch of actual texture. 
and then we'll apply it. This will actually make our design look much better and more appropriate for the sign that we're using. So now let's preview this, it looks very similar, but now when we look at it from the perspective view, this is much better. This is a lot more like what I was thinking. The texture doesn't flow all the way down to the bottom. It's got a little bit of a base to it. And then the texture is just kind of at the top. That's kind of what I wanted. So you can do this with any of your textures. And so it's something to consider is maybe adding a little base to it so that your texture doesn't have to be so deep. Uh, something that's, if you're doing any of the wood textures, for example, that's another uh, thing to keep an eye out. You don't necessarily need, need really deep wood textures. You may only want it to go 1.125 inches or, or something really light. Uh, and so that's something, this technique is kind of something you, you want to keep an eye out for. So there's our background. So that's what we want. We really like it. Now, if I want to start toolpathing this, I need to move this down into the plate. So if I'm at the point where I'm done modifying the relief, now I can move it down. Because do remember that from our 3D episode, that when you're modifying reliefs, you have to do it at the top of the plate and above. Otherwise, it does weird stuff. But then when you're tool pathing, if you don't move it down into the plate, that it does weird stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird thing to kind of keep track of, but um, just note that that's the case. So let's grab our relief and let's just move it down to the bottom of the material. So I've done everything in kind of a, a way here that makes it easy for me just to modify this stuff and align them to the bottom of the plate. So I don't have to think about where do I have to put it in the plate? You know, I'm adding the reliefs and stuff in so that it matches the depth that I'm expecting or would like it to be at. So I don't have to try and move things up and down in Z uh, from this particular view. All right, so you can see here that it's moved it down to the material. That looks good to me. So we can go back to our top view and now we can tool path. Okay, so now we wanna to start to tool path and we wanna do the masking. So we talked about masking before. And one thing to remember about masking, we'll just kind of quickly go over this, is that your 3D texture does not count towards your container system or your container hole. So for example, if I grab the two lines like this, I have a blue and a red. But if I grab my 3D relief and then grab this piece, it's blue and blue. That's because my relief doesn't count towards my container or my holes. Or if I go like this and like this, it's blue and blue. But when I grab both of them, then I see that. So what this is gonna give me is even though I have texture all the way throughout the background here and all the way throughout the middle, that's okay because what that's gonna do for me is that's actually gonna create a texture that it almost looks like it was cut right from that texture. So you've got a nice background texture that it flows behind it. So when you when you actually create this mask and you cut it out, it's gonna look like it just got carved out of a section right from another texture in the back, which is the what we want. So this is gonna avoid putting texture in the red area here and it's gonna put texture all throughout the, the edge and then nothing out here. So we're going to do an island fill. And we're going to do two, but two bits. We're going to use a half inch end mill for roughing. And I'm going to set the depth here to two inches. Now, if you remember, it doesn't mean it's going to cut down to two inches. It's going to search for reliefs down to two inches. And if, it, if there's part of the relief that does go down to two inches, it will cut that far. But if there's not, then it won't. So uh, we want it to go as far as it needs to. So edit, I'm gonna go into depths here and I'm gonna choose the step rough function and I'm gonna say offset from surface 0 0.01. So basically this just means that it's not gonna mar the surface of, it's gonna keep that end mill away from the surface a little bit so that it doesn't mess up the actual surface. We'll let the other bit, our finishing bit, 
do all the, the, the finishing stuff. So we'll click OK. And then we'll go into our ball nose. And I think in this particular case, a 3 16th inch ball nose will probably do just fine. So we'll do that. We'll leave it at two inches. We're going to come in here. And then we'll up the passes here to, we'll just do 80%. Uh, we, if we go farther, it, it's just going to prolong our, our, our episode here. So you don't want it to process for too much. So that should be OK. And let's click OK. So let's let this process, and then we'll take a look at what this looks like in our 3D preview. So we're going to just go ahead and so what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing a square uh, for my preview so I can use less processing power. There's no point in me processing the entire plate when it's not necessary. Uh, I don't need to process. There's nothing out there out around here. I just need to process what's right in the middle here. And so I select the highlight there, simulate 3D. And if I choose use the selected contours as a mask, it'll actually lower the res. I can go higher in my resolution and it'll make my megabytes go down. So I can go higher resolution with less megabytes, basically is what we're talking about there. So like it just saves a little bit of processing power in my computer so that it doesn't have to process a bunch of stuff that's not actually being used. So I click OK. I'm going to let this guy run. And it'll just take a second here. So one of the things to uh, to remember also is, uh, you know, use this function to kind of test what your test the waters out and just see, you know, what's going to happen with your cuts. It won't hurt, um, and this actually can save you a lot of time or maybe headaches doing testing and, and things like that. So let's turn on the light bulb and see what we got. Now this is a little bit harsh, and I'll have to change the lighting maybe for the next one. Um, it's hard to see, but um, you can kind of see that we've got our 3D texture here, and then this is standing up. And then one thing you'll note is that it is the exact same height as the edge. So we're going to change that. But so far, we're looking good here. So this is exactly what I want. I want the texture in the background with this panel raised up. But that's a little too high, so we're going to knock that down a little bit in our next step. So we'll hit Done. That's looking good, so I can move on to my next layer. So we'll go to the raised platform. OK. So now on this platform, we're going to do, I'm going to show you something real quick. We're going to use that same half inch end mill. So clear. Let's go back to our end mills. And we're going to do, let's see, we want it to be 1.75 inches tall. So we're going to cut this down to 0.25. Um, and we're just going to hit apply. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that when you do an island fill that's not necessarily tied to a 3D object, you don't have the option to push the toolpath to the edge. And the reason why that's important in this case is because you're going to get with the island fill, it automatically offsets half the diameter of the bit to the inside. Well, there might be tiny little slivers of material left over right along the edges um, when we cut this with this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure and do a slight overcut on this, just, just enough, just so that we don't have any slivers or so that we get a nice clean clean cut over the top of this thing because we don't necessarily want it to, to leave any slivers or bad pieces here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this, delete the tool path, and then I'm going to go and just add a real quick offset. And we're going to make that 0.125 inches. So something barely noticeable. It's really not going to change our time of cut that much. Uh, just something to go just past it and, and we'll be good. OK, so I'm going to delete that inside line because we don't need it anymore. And then we'll do the same tool path on this guy. So 0.25 inches down, done. And what I'm going to do at this point now is I'm going to turn on all layers. I'm going to turn all my layers so that I have the routing for the platform. And then I have routing for the 3D texture. 
select my object and we'll do the 3D again. And we'll just kind of preview this and see how it looks. So you guys can get a visual representation of kind of what's happening here. So we got tool path going on here. Let's, uh, let's zoom in a little bit. Now we've got our rough passes done and now it's doing our 3D pass. So this is going to be our real fine pass on this guy. And the last thing it's going to do is it's going to knock off the top here a little bit, just a little bit lower. There we go. It's done. And so now when we look at it from the side, you can clearly see that now this is lower than the outside. And that's the kind of exactly what I wanted. All right. So now that we have our platform, I'm going to engrave letters uh, into this. Now we're going to do several different techniques for the letters. So kind of give us, give us several different examples of different things that we can do. We're going to do one engrave, and then we'll do a 3D texture, and then we'll do a, a th uh, just a plain standout letter. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go back to our main page here, and let's move on, turn off all layers, and then let's move on to our text. Okay, so uh, real quick, uh, there's two things I could do here. Uh, I'm going to use it to start out with. I'm going to use a, a 3D engrave. So I'm going to go into my engraving tool path, and I'm going to go into my conic tools, and I have a 120 degree uh, conic setup. And I want these letters to go uh, 0.25 inches down into the material. Now, You'll know if you've been kind of following along here that we already removed 0.25 inches of material. So technically, this is actually going to cut in the air, which is not what we want. This is going to be the one of the very few times, if you've ever maybe called in tech support, they always tell you this should always be zero. The surface setting should always be zero. No questions asked, because there are very few times when you're going to use it. But in this particular case, I already have a tool path that's going to mill down the surface of the material. So the surface is no longer at two inches. It's at 1.75. So I'm going to set my surface at 0.25. That means that I've, I've removed 0.25 inches from the material. This will push the tool path quarter inch down into the material and then start cutting. So that's going to be important. So we'll click OK. Uh, and then I'm going to choose the option for a 3 engrave because I wanted to do some V groove letters. So click that option. Uh, and since uh, you, you want to use a 3D engrave in this option because we are not using um, single stroke fonts. So single stroke fonts, you don't have to do a 3D engrave with because there's only one line. Uh, with this font, because it's not a single stroke font, you have to do the have en route do the calculations of how deep to go with the tool so that it keeps everything in the lines, right? So let's go ahead and just preview this and see what it looks like along with everything else so that we can get an idea of what actually happens when we use that uh, 3D engrave. And then we'll make some adjustments on this because you'll see what it what it does. Oh, hold on. Before we do that, I promised you I was going to change... You can go in here, so under the preferences, if you go to relief, you can change the orientation of the light source. So I'm going to change it just in such a way so that it kind of casts a little bit of a shadow so that when we do this, it doesn't look like, because when the light source is coming from directly on top, it we're just getting blasted from the sun, so to speak, and it's just kind of blowing out the textures and we can't really see them. So by adjusting that, that allows us to, um, to see the textures a little bit better. So you'll see that here in a moment. Actually pretty handy when you're doing like a texture that's really hard to see, like a, like a fine wood grain texture. Uh, sometimes it can be really hard to see. So you can set that light source at, at a high angle and it'll cast a shadow on it so it's easier to see. There we go. So you can kind of see how it's cast a little more of a shadow on here. So it's a little easier to see our texture down here. Okay, so um, here's what we got. So this is okay. 
but you can kind of see the main problem with this is that there's this raised section in the middle here uh, that obviously is not really what I want. I either, there's two ways I can address this, right? I can either make the engraved cut go deeper, which that's a, a perfectly viable solution. If you want the bottom of the letter to end in a point or a, or a, a sharp point, like a, a traditional V groove letter would, then we just need to go deeper. That's just all we can do about it. If you don't want it to go deeper or you can't, or the, the thickness of the material really doesn't allow us to go, if it doesn't allow you to go deeper, then maybe what we need to do is have a bit come in here and clean this out for us so that this doesn't end up being, this will just end up being flat. So, and that could be possible if you were working with maybe one inch material or something, maybe you can't go that deep. It's too deep, maybe you'll cut, cut to the bottom of the material if you go too far. So this might be another good option. So let's, let's, let's look at both options and see how they turn out so we can kind of get a good idea of what, what to expect with both of them. The great thing is because I've modularly put this together with my layers, all I have to do is go to my text layer, delete it, reapply it. And this time I'm gonna say, let's cut down double the depth, so 0.5 inches. Turn on all my layers, grab like our sign here. And this is why I like working in layers and kind of segmenting things like off like this, because just like that, very quickly, I was able to make a quick change without having to rebuild the entire sign. Because technically, I could build all of these pieces into the relief itself. And that's actually doable. But what happens when you need to go to change it? Well, then you have to rebuild the whole thing. And that's way more time consuming. Plus, 2.5D or 2D tool pathing is way faster than 3D. So you'll save yourself a little bit of time doing it this way too. All right, there we go. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, it gives me my nice sharp edges and everything that I want, everything that I hoped and dreamed of. <laughs> so this is exactly one way of dealing with it. Now, let's say you couldn't go deep enough, right? Let's say that you were limited by your material thickness. Let's look at the other option. The other option would be to go turn off all layers, delete our toolpath again, except for this time, instead of doing a 3D engrave, I'm going to do an island fill. I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to grab an end mill, and I'm going to make it fairly small. So I'm going to go eighth inch end mill. We're just going to do 0.25. Uh, we also have to make sure that we put our 0.25 in here because we want to follow that. OK. And then I'm going to grab my conic tool again, my 120. I'm going to verify that it's at 0.25. It is. And then I'm going to choose the 3D tool pass. Basically, by clicking this button, it's doing the exact same thing as if I were doing uh, the 3D engraved tool pass that we just did before. So this checks that option for me. Click OK. Click OK. And now you can see with the HSN mill, it's con in here and removed, it's going to remove that excess material while still maintaining a sort of V-groove style letter. So let's turn on all layers, select my thing here to make this easier. And let's just go up to here and hit play. <clears throat> so this is just a little bit of different of effect. And this is actually something that sometimes you may want or you may not want, depending on, on what you're looking for. Um, some people like this look a lot and, uh, it works well too. So, um, it's just a different style. So now we've got a V groove letter where the bottoms are hogged out so that they're nice and flat. So again, that's just a different way of doing it. And that kind of looks cool. Um, if that's kind of the effect that you were looking for, then that's, that's how you do that. You do an Island fill with a clean tool and, uh, or a fill tool, and then your, your 3D engraved conic tool. Okay, so what if we wanna add, so let, let's say, why don't, 
let's just say we want to take these letters and make them stand up. So stand up, and we'll start with flat. We'll make them stand up flat uh, from, from this base. Well, that's fairly easy to do because we've got the infrastructure for it already. I'm going to grab these letters. We'll just remove the toolpath. But this time, instead of having a text layer, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go back to my raised platform section. And I'm going to paste it to the active layer. I'm going to take the toolpath over here. Remember, uh, we were doing uh, half an inch here. So we're going to delete this toolpath. And why don't we push this down? A little bit farther. So instead of a half an inch, why don't we push it down to, or a quarter inch, let's push it down to a half inch. So I'm going to say island fill. And this time though, I'm going to add two end mills. I'm going to add an end mill. So I'm going to do my big half inch end mill. And the depth here is going to be 0.5. And then I'm going to add a an eighth inch and mill just to do a fine tool pass so that it can fit in between those nooks and crannies. And I'm not gonna really add any extra depths or surface in this case. I just wanna mill down and then basically with my masking here, I'm just gonna leave these letters standing. That's how those are gonna be. And I've chosen a small enough bit so that it can fit in between here and all the appropriate letters here, so that's good. So just with a few quick little changes, turn on all layers, simulate this. What I'm going to get left with is I'm going to have a little bit lower standoff or base standoff. And then I'm going to have letters that are as tall as the outside of the uh, Uh, the edge of the, the material, so look, something like this. So I didn't need, I don't really need to build this out of 3D, all of it out of 3D. I can use my 2D tool pathing to create a, a nice little effect like this. All that was using just 2D tool pathing and just setting it at different depths. Now, if I wanted to go back and mill down the tops of these letters, I could do that too. But in this case, Instead of doing that, why don't we add a texture to these letters and mill down that texture? So let's hit done and let's go back. So we're just going to keep adding to this because uh, it's fun. And so I'm going to keep this. I actually kind of like this. I want enough texture. I want those letters to be standing up enough to where we've got enough texture. So I'm going to leave the half inch down. I'm going to go back to my text section here, and I'm going to create a 3D relief off of this. So if we think about our math so far, we've got two inch material. We have our relief that's going up to one inch. And if we go back to this, we're cutting this down to a half an inch. So that means that that is standing at 1.5 five inches now instead of 1.7 like it was before. So 1.5. So that gives us half an inch of material to work with to create a texture. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to keep the same theory of I only want my texture to be 0.25 inches thick, um, but I want it to stand 0.25 inches above the, the other raised background. So when I go to build this, I'm going to say create a relief. I'm going to say add flat. And I'm going to add, let's see here, 1.5 inches of base relief to this. And then I'm going to add a quarter inch of, of texture. So now I've got some text there with some texture on it, or just a base a relief, sorry, no texture. And then I'm just gonna fill it in with, uh, I don't know, let's just do phase. That sounds neat. Um, 0.25 and maybe we, I 
meander size. You know what? I think I think we'll just leave it. We'll leave it as default. I think that'll be okay because if we do a nice uh, nice texture, that'll be easy to see. All right. So now if we just preview this. On its own, this is kind of what it looks like. This is a perspective view. So this is kind of what we're going to get. We're going to get a nice wavy texture on top of the letters. So that's kind of cool. And so if I like that, I'm going to turn off my render view, and then I'm going to go to align it to the bottom of the plate. So if I look at it from the side view, the texture is way up here. If we kind of do this, you can see here that the texture is going to be pretty far up here, but still sunken into the material. So that's actually exactly what I want. Um, so we'll turn that off for a second. Now to toolpath this. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, we're going to do an island fill on this guy. Um, we're going to cut down to, let's cut down to point seven five inches uh actually we need to clear this tool all together get uh, a ball and mill we're not using the right tools actually you know what we could use a we could use a bigger tool for this uh because there's not as much detail in these swoops so we could actually go with like a quarter inch in ball mill um we'll go 0.75 on the depth just because we want it to make sure and make sure it cuts deep enough um it, you know, it's only going to cut a quarter inch deep, but I want to make sure that that we're looking in the right areas. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and overlap this. We'll do an 80% here. Uh, and then what do we want to do? Oh, let's do an overcut. And the reason why we want to do the overcut is remember, remember why we did the overcut with the with the flat base? The same reason applies. For this, except for because this is a 3D relief, we can apply the overcut and we don't need to do anything. We just need to set, because it's a relief, we can set an overcut and we're just going to leave it at zero. Basically, what that does is it pushes the center of the toolpath right to the middle of the line. And you'll see that here once we apply it. So hit apply. And now you can see instead of being half the diameter in, it's the last tool path actually covers this area right here, which is good because I don't want any of those little little pieces hanging off or, or doing anything foolish, you know, leaving any bad piece. I want to leave this in a way that I have to do as little sanding as possible. So that will be that. Now, I believe, let's double check our text. Okay, that's good. We don't want to have any tool paths in the letters. That's good there. So apply our layers, click our guy here, simulate 3D, and we'll do something like that. And we'll let it rip here. So one of the things that you'll also need to consider is once you kind of have all your tool paths and your things set up, you're going to need to consider tool ordering. So there's several different ways that you can accomplish that while this is processing. Um, we'll just kind of talk about those. And, and that's why you can do it by layer. So you can set up your layers so that your the top layer is the one that cuts first, and then the second layer cuts second, so that you don't end up with a scenario where an eighth inch tool is cutting all the way through the material. Um, you know, and you can do that here. If we click on order, you can set your layer as the first priority. And then uh, if you do that, and then maybe you can order your tools so that it goes layer and then always do the bigger tools first. You know, so that's going to be something you'll want to consider. Or the other thing would be just output each layer separately. Uh, that's entirely possible too. But if you want it to be all one big file, uh, you could do that that way. So let's turn on our preview. And just like that now, we have some letters that are slightly raised up but they have a little bit of a texture on the top of them here. And of course, you can interchange any one of these textures with any other texture. You could do a hex grid. You could do you know, the flow. You could do the wood texture. 
You could do the brick texture, the cells. It doesn't matter which one you use. These are all interchangeable. And the, the, the nice advantage of doing everything the way that we did, where we mix in different types of tool passes with each other, is that if I ever want to go back and make a change, it's really, really easy. I can just go back in here to my 3D texture and say, I hate that texture. Let's do a different texture. And so all I have to do is come in here, delete that texture, or delete the tool path, delete the texture, Click on my guy here. We did, I believe if we remember right, I did 0 0.75. Apply. And then let's just do something else like hexes. Why not? To 0.25 inches in depth, we'll just apply the default settings here. And of course you can always play with these uh, to make it customizable, uh, completely custom. Uh, then we just go back in here and do our island fill. We get our rough cut. And we're setting this at two. Whoops, not 20. That's not necessary. Um, there we go. And then we do our ball end mill. Ball nose, and we can use a 316 to see how that works. Uh, and then we could do our fill. Let me just do the fill at like 70% so it goes a little bit quicker. Um, and click OK. Oh, you know what? We made a mistake. I got into a rush and we made a mistake. Uh, if we want to change the 3D relief, what do we have to do? We've got to go back. Hold on. See, we all make mistakes. Okay, so we got to grab this guy. We have to move our geometry back to the top of the material. So uh, move zero, because remember when we're editing 3D, 3D, uh, 3D stuff or adding 3D reliefs and stuff like that, we always have to do it from the top of the plate. I almost forgot. I almost wasted all that time. Okay, so add a relief. The good thing is all of our presets will be here, so it'll be quick. Apply hex 0.25, apply. And then before we tool path, now we need to put them down in the into the bottom of the material. Okay, that's appropriate. Uh, and then we select our objects together and it should remember the last tool path we did. Yep, it did. Uh, we don't need to do an overcut in this particular one. So actually, that's something to note. Uh, apply. Turn on all layers. Click on this. And let's just check it out and see how that looks. So the nice thing, like I said, again, the nice thing about doing it this way versus stacking a bunch of 3D uh, effects on top of each other is that you can you can kind of easily switch things out. Now, I understand there's going to be some examples where, you know, perhaps something that you're building, you're going to have to do that. And that's there's no way around it. And that's OK. But if there's a scenario where you can avoid that. There we go. So now we've quickly just changed out the 3D relief for a hex grid instead, and we've created a completely different look. Um, then the last thing, as the, as the last thing that we need to do, you go to your outside cut, grab this guy, and just throw in a routing offset on this guy. And we're just gonna use our same half inch end mill because why not? Keep our tools consistent. So we'll go 2.1, just go a little bit past the material. OK, and then you're basically set. And I'm going to leave this geometry here because if I ever come back and need this geometry, it's not going to hurt it that it's there. I just turn on all my layers, preview it, make sure it looks good before I output, make sure that my ordering is all in, in sorted order. Make sure that that looks good. I make sure that the tools are going in the right order that I want them to be in. And then uh, 
away we go. So that's, uh, you know, that's creating a sign from, from scratch. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, a basic example there, but it has a lot of different things. And you could take that to, you know, the extreme. Um, there's a lot of different things that you could do with this. A lot of different techniques. A lot of people like to have the that wood veneer uh, background here with their sign. Um, but this here is going to cut a lot faster than it would if you built the entire thing out of 3D. So we used a lot of techniques. We used masking. We used 3D. We used 3D engraving. Uh, in this case, and learned how to use how to uh, properly use the the surface to offset the surface. Uh, we use two D tool pathing to create some of the more basic shapes. And what I really like about using the masking, for example, is the nice texture that it leaves. The transition between the texture and the side here is just is really nice. There's not like a weird. Uh, transition or a slope. It's just nice vertical edges that you get here that make this really, really nice. And that's why I like doing that with the masking to create a nice type of sign like that. So I know that was kind of a long one. Do you have any questions on this? And uh, I'm sure there probably are, but uh, hopefully you guys can review this later and, and do something like this on your own. Uh, and come up with some really cool stuff. It's Gerald has a question here. He's asking, why do you set the hex relief at two inches when your material is two inches? Uh, so the hex relief, uh, I set the relief to one point, or sorry, uh, you mean when I tool path it? I'm assuming that's when you meant, is when I tool path it. Um, the reason why I, I set the tool pathing to two inches deep is because the way that Enroute looks for a tool path um, in 3D. So just because I set my tool path to two inches, it does not mean that it's going to actually cut that far. It's just going to look for a relief that's that deep. So in this case, I probably could have gone to one point, uh, I, I couldn't put my depth to, let's see, uh, 1.25, I think, or maybe a little bit more, and I've been okay. But I know that the tool path is not gonna go past the relief. And so the two is just kind of a safe, setting um i could get the same result by by doing 1.75 i think uh i just want to make sure that i don't have any tool path that doesn't go beyond or that doesn't reach the bottom of the texture kind of idea um yeah i, I hopefully that answers the question uh wolfgang and you're in response to your question, when we're planning on making training for rapid texture contour, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I think we have videos on our YouTube channel for uh, rapid texture. Yeah, we do. Now, rapid texture is a little bit different. You could apply. Actually, that's another thing that you could do with this file is instead of doing a 3D texture on the letters, you could actually do a, a rapid texture on the, on the text instead. But the difference between rapid texture is going to be that the rapid texture is um, is all based on the line depth. So you're going to tell it to follow contour. When you go to engrave uh, those lines, because the lines vary in the Z, the rapid texture goes up and down. It draws lines that are up and down in the Z. When you if I just draw a line, uh, you're going to choose the option under engrave to follow contour, and that's going to negate anything that's in the depth category. So I could put 20 for my depth, and it's not going to go that far because it's going to take the contour, and it's going to follow the depth of the contour instead. So rapid texture works a little bit differently in that case. So 
that's why with the 3D, you have to define how deep you want the toolpath to go. But with rapid texture, you don't. You just tell it to follow the contour and then it goes then it would be your responsibility to make sure that when you apply or you create your rapid texture, that you create your rapid texture at a certain depth or uh, make sure that it's at the correct depth uh, for, for those lines. And rapid texture is faster. Uh, it would be much faster than doing 3D. So uh, that would be, I didn't think about that scenario and I didn't really have a, an example lined up for that, but. I didn't think about it, but yeah, rapid texture would be a really great option here. It would be a really great option even for the background, to be completely honest. If you wanted to replace the background with the 3D texture with a rapid texture instead, that would be a really good way to do it. But I did the 3D just because I wanted to, to incorporate some of those 3D parts of it uh, so that we do a little mixture of both. Uh, Greg is asking, are there any features that you show only available in version seven? He's asking because he's using version six. Uh, that's a good question. Um, there are some features, but not anything you could do. Pretty much you could do 90% of this or, or pretty much all of it using the same features that are in six. So this is possible in six. I think the only thing that's going to be different is the visuals visualization of the colors and stuff like that in the 3D. Uh, so some of these textures have color to them in NROUTE 7, uh, whereas they don't have those colors in 6. But that's not that big of a deal. Uh, most of it, you can, in fact, you could do all of it in 6. So you should be able to do all that. All right. And then another question from Gerald. Uh, what are the typical settings for feed and speeds for ball nose route bits? And where can I find those online? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, we don't post any kind of feeds and speeds, uh, mainly because of the liability of it. Um, we don't want to tell you a number and then have it break a bit. Um, but it, it kind of honestly depends. Here's what I would do is where, wherever you purchase your bits from, I would go to that manufacturer. So let's say you buy bits from um, X, X, I can't remember the name of the company. Anyway, doesn't matter. You go to their manufacturing website and wherever you buy them from, and they should have specifications uh, for what it should run, I think in wood or some kind of material. So they should have some kind of basic specs for what it should run in, say, MDF or, or maybe um, plywood or something like that. You can take that number and then just up it or, or lower it based on the hardness of the material that you're cutting. So ideally, if you're cutting aluminum, you're going to bump that way down. If you're cutting sign foam, let it rip, you know, because that stuff is a lot uh, depend, well, I guess depending on, again, there are caveats to each sign foam. Uh, depending on the thickness or the density of your sign foam, if you're using super, super dense sign foam, then you'll probably back it off a little bit. But if you're using super light sign foam or stuff that almost is like styrofoam, then you can blast through it really fast. Uh, so it kind of just depends um, if you're doing it at MDF or aluminum or if you're cutting out of uh, you know, hardwood, or if you're cutting out of, you know, sign foam, it's, they're all going to be a little bit different. So I would check the bit manufacturer, see what their base value is, and then maybe run some tests on a scrap piece or something and say, okay, this is kind of feasible or this is not. And then before you go into cutting something, because you do want to have your feeds and speeds, at least have a good idea of what you're doing before you cut it. Because what you could do is you could end up with 3D anyway, you want to be cutting as fast as you possibly can um, because it takes a long time. Um, and so hence, that's the reason why I use the step rough option because I don't want, I want my, my cut to cut all that excess material out first with a bigger bit and then only allow the, eight, the, the, the small tool, the round bit, cut just a tiny little bit off the top so that I can run that bit as fast as I can. Um, so using that step rough option is, is a helpful thing because then you can 
hog out big sections without having to, because you can't change your tool path feeds halfway through. So you would have to apply your feed rate at the beginning of the tool path, just as the end. So of course, also size of bit makes a difference too. So whether you're using a, a half inch bit, they can take more quarter inch bits can take less eighth inch bits and 16th inch bits are kind of delicate. So you can't, you gotta be really careful with those. Um, but that's, that's the process I would take if I were buying a uh, bit from a manufacturer. X edge tools is the name of the company, by the way, that I was thinking of. Um, that's one of many. I mean, if you go to the trade, if you go to IWF, there'll probably be like 10 bit manufacturers there. So, Uh, Casey, I'm just posting our the link to our YouTube channel here. That's where you can find previous webinars. Um, and we'll post this recording to there as well. Uh, and you'll you'll also receive a link to this recording in your email later. So don't have to worry about that. But that's where you can find all of the previous webinars and other tutorials and videos. Uh, we've got plenty of stuff on on YouTube for you to learn. Any other questions for for Aaron before we close it out today? And while we wait for other questions, uh, Aaron just mentioned IWF. Um, we will be sending some of our team members to IWF. If you're not familiar with that, that's the woodworking sh uh, trade show. It's going to be in Atlanta this year. It's at the end of August. Uh, so if you're there, planning on being there, come check out our booth. And you can even say hi to Aaron because he'll be there. Yep, I'll be there. So that'll, uh, if you want to come by and see us, uh, just come on, step by. I'm not seeing any other questions come in. Um, so we'll go ahead and close it out for today. But if you do come up with any questions later, uh, if you're watching this recording back, you can always post those questions in the comments of the YouTube video and we can answer them there or refer you to a place where you can get those answers. Uh, but for now, we'll go ahead and close it out. Thank you all again for joining us for this NROUT webinar. Uh, we're currently in the process of planning webinars for the rest of the year, so make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter. That way you won't miss out on any of those announcements. Um, you can sign up for that on our website, and you can also follow us on social media to get information about those. Um, thanks again for being here. We hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.